Hi everybody, this is Judy at Judy in the Kitchen. Today we're talking Yellow Squash 101, the basics. And as usual, I have notes in front of me. There's a lot to be said here. And you don't need to worry about copying anything down. I have a link below in the description box where you can go straight to my notes and print them out for your own personal use as you need to. So just sit back and think about any questions that you have, then post them in the comment section below, and I'll be glad to address them if I possibly can. About yellow squash. Yellow squash is a member of the gourd family. How interesting. So they are relatives to winter squashes and also to melons. They're close cousins with zucchini. A lot of us know that uh, yellow squash and zucchini are pretty much interchangeable in recipes. There are straight neck versions and crook neck version. This is a crook neck. It doesn't have a bit, a big crook neck, but a little bit of a bend right here, and so that would be a crook neck variety. A fun fact is that summer squash is native to North America, specifically what is now central and southern USA. So it's like, yay, it's hard to find something that's actually native to the United States, and this one is. Now, cultivation quickly spread, so it's yellow squash are now found uh, worldwide. Nutrition tidbits. Yellow squash contains an array of important nutrients, including copper, manganese, vitamin C, magnesium, fiber, phosphorus, potassium, B vitamins, and more. Interestingly, it also has a couple of very important antioxidants, lutein and zeantin, and these things are known for protecting our eye health. They help to ward off macular degeneration and cataracts. So we need to eat our yellow squash, if for nothing else, than to help protect our eyes. We don't think of these things as having fat in them. They're not known for being a fatty type of fruit or vegetable. It's actually a fruit because it has seeds, but we eat it as a vegetable. It's not known for having fat, but what little fat it actually has in there has some omega-3 fatty acids, and it also has some monounsaturated fats. So it's healthy for us in a number of ways. And one cup of raw yellow squash has only 20 calories. So hey, we can really pig out on yellow squash and not get a big spare tire as a result, depending upon what we put on it. Also, that one cup of raw yellow squash has 1.62 grams of protein. So that's not a lot, but it is some, and it adds to the daily intake on protein. So, yet even more reason to include yellow squash in your diet. How to select yellow squash? We want to choose ones that are heavy for the size, that have a bright yellow skin or rind that it does not have a lot of blemishes on it, okay? And also the rind or the skin should be on the tender side. If you find them one that's tough, chances are it's very large and it's over mature, it's overgrown. When you find ones like that, I have seen some people grow them to like huge, you know, this big and zucchinis that big. When they're that big, the skin becomes very tough, the seeds become very tough and really inedible, and the flesh doesn't taste as good as it does when it's on the smaller side. So you want to choose ones that are medium, too smaller, but not teeny teeny tiny, because if it is very, very small, chances are it's underdeveloped and the flavor might not be the best. How to store your yellow squash? We want to store it unwashed in the refrigerator in an airtight container for up to a week. Like anything fresh that you buy, you want to use it as quickly as you can because they do age along the way. How to preserve your yellow squash? Well, it's best eaten fresh. Although you can freeze them. You'll find frozen yellow squash in the grocery store and you can freeze them yourself. And I have instructions in the notes on the best way to freeze them, which avoids that boiling but uses steam instead. There's a high water content in them. And when you use yellow squash that has been frozen, you'll find that it can turn into a pile of mush when you go to cook it. So if you want to cook frozen yellow squash, cook it 
in the least amount of water you possibly can for the least amount of time you possibly can. And that will help to preserve the texture that's there. Otherwise, it will turn mushy very quickly. Fresh versus frozen. Basically, I'm repeating myself on this one. Fresh yellow squash is going to be tender and very, very versatile because you can use it raw or you can cook it any way you want. Frozen, you're kind of limited on what you can do. It would not be suitable for uh, a dish that calls for raw squash because you can't regain that texture that it once had when it was raw. You need to cook it quickly in the least amount of water. And so you're limited on what you can do with frozen squash. It is good, it is fine to have on hand, but it is not as versatile as the fresh. How is it usually eaten? We eat it both ways in this country, raw in salads, but I think more often we'll eat it cooked than we will eat it raw. How to prepare your yellow squash? Well, first thing you want to do is give it a really solid wash, and then you want to cut off both ends. Do not peel it. A lot of the nourishment is associated with the peel or directly under the peel. So if it has blemishes and you want to cut them off, fine, do that. But don't peel the whole thing because you're throwing away a lot of the nutritional value of the squash when you do that. So just wash it really well, cut the ends off, and then cut it into whatever size pieces you need for whatever you're going to do. Cooking and serving methods. Yellow squash uh, obviously can be enjoyed raw, but we can also do all sorts of things with it in the cooked vein. We can spiralize it into noodles, we can grill it, saute it, steam it, boil it briefly, roast it, stir fry it, stuff it, add it to casseroles, add it to egg dishes, and it's really good that way, bake it into breads and muffins in place of zucchini, uh, there's so many things you can do with it, it's really just limited to your imagination. Now at this point in my notes, I do have uh, some resources, some quick tips and ideas on what to do with yellow squash. They came from whfoods.com, that's the world's healthiest foods.com, great, great website. And one of the things here will benefit a lot of people, I know there are a lot of people who are wanting to avoid using oil in their diet and they have a recipe here for a healthy saute where you can saute the yellow squash in some water or some broth of whatever type you choose to use and the directions are there so uh, there's something here for everybody. Herbs and spices that go well with yellow squash, garlic and olive oil, chives, dill, basil, oregano, Italian seasoning, rosemary, parsley, mint is interesting, and thyme. Other foods that go well with yellow squash. Pasta, I have a delicious pasta dish that I make with it. Tomatoes, onion, roasted or grilled meat, chicken, seafood, lemon, eggs, bacon, cheese, mushrooms, bell peppers, corn, and lots more. Following that, I have a variety of recipe links here on what you can do with yellow squash. There's bound to be something for everyone. There's a five minute healthy sauteed summer squash, anytime frittata, sauteed yellow squash with fresh herbs, 100 plus ways to use zucchini and yellow squash. That same link was in my zucchini notes, but now it's in the yellow squash because it applies both ways. A summer squash casserole, roasted vegetable gnocchi with spinach herb pesto, and that's got squash in there as well baked summer squash, and 41 sensational summer squash recipes. I really think there's something that is bound to turn you on somewhere in those recipes. So again, and then I've got resources under that. So uh, if you have any questions that I didn't address here, please feel free to ask in the comments section below. I'll be glad to answer them if I possibly can. I sure hope this helps. This is Judy at Judy in the Kitchen. Bye for now.